Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for joining us for the Integrity Leadership Class. Thank you so much. I would like to introduce my counterpart in this class, Mr. Reverend Reginald Paul. The floor Good is evening, yours. Everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Uh, like we started the last class, everybody give yourself a round of applause for being here. That's good. Give it a give it time to sink in, and also remember that we are superstars. So every time that I look up, I know that I'm looking at y'all. So let that soak in as well. Uh, I would also like to start off, uh, if we don't mind, with a quick prayer, just for the simple fact that uh, no, it's needed. So it's just gonna be real quick. I just want to say, Father, we thank you for being here. And everything that is about to be said and everything that's about to be heard, that we digest it. And when we digest it, let it into our bodies like the nutrients and let it, do, let it do its job. Again, I want to say that I'm very thankful for being here and, and learning together with a group of people and just showing what the definition of you really means. And that is just overall unconditional love. With that, I just say amen. Amen. Okay, uh, last week we had a real good session. Yes, we did. So I know this week it'll be a real good session as well. Uh, anybody want to say anything before we even get started? Anybody has something to say about their peak or their valley that they was in this week? Because you know, our plateau, our plateau. Anybody want to talk about that? Go ahead and, 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 and say something. Get it off your chest. Don't hold it in. Right, Be lethal if you hold Maya. it in. <laughs> Ms. Maya, she unmuted her mic. The floor is yours, Ms. Maya. Um, okay. I appreciate that whole um, class uh, last week. And it just opened my eyes to so much. And me thinking that I had just reached a peak, it was just another peak right after that peak. So I didn't realize that it was gonna come up so fast, but I'm really truly grateful um, that, you know, at least I was set up to look at some, look for something um, that was bigger than what I had planned originally. And I'm grateful for that. Thank you right. for sharing it. Yes, thank you for sharing it. Congratulations. So keep that in mind with today's session. Uh, anyone else before uh, I get that first topic? Would anybody like to share with us anything that you took away from the last class or about your peaks, your valleys, or as Reverend Reginald said early, even your plateau? Does anyone have anything that they would like to share with us? What's up, guys? It's Gene. <clears throat> so what I would like to say is from the last class, I learned to appreciate the valleys. And while being in the valley, it's like you have to be grateful. I'm going to say it like this because this is how I speak. When you don't have nothing, it makes you realize when you have peace without having anything, when you're at the bottom, it's not when you get to the top that you're going to find peace because it's going to be in you on your way to the top. It's going to be with you at the bottom. It's going to be with you on the journey. And when you get to the top, don't forget that the peace is already in you. <laughs> the joy is in you. And that's something that I've been learning and planting while I'm down here in the valley. Not saying that I'm in the valley, but that's when I was in the valley because I'm crawling out of the valley. And I know to bring the joy and the peace with me. So that's what I have from the last class. And that, my friend, is what you call progress. Right. That is the definition of progress. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Well, with all those things being said. Oh. We, and we have hope. Ms. La, Ms. LaVon, or did you want to share with us? Yes. 
Hello? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am, Miss Levon, we hear you, but we hear you, but you're kind of distant for us. Okay, what about now? Is that better? Yes, ma'am. A whole lot better. Yes, definitely. Okay. Okay, I had you on the Bluetooth. Um, Hello, Miss Levon, I think you muted on us. Oh, oh, could you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. You're 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 coming through clear for us. Okay, so I was saying that um, usually I I listen. So um, I would say I I'm at my peak. No, no, not my peak. I'm sorry. I was in the valley, um, and so um, today I told myself I have to get out of the valley. I I need to talk, speak, you know, express some things that I have to share as well. So. I would say that right now I'm at my peak because um, I'm overcoming this, um, what, how can I put it, uh, fear of speaking out, if that makes sense. So right now I'm just, I feel like I'm overcoming something by talking right now. <laughs> um, so I don't really have much to say, <laughs> but <laughs> I needed to say something, so. I would say right now is my peak. Thank well, you. Con well, congratulations, Miss Lavon. Let's all give her a round of applause because we know how it is to have to. Have to that is a thank you, Miss Lavon. Thank you, and I'm so happy that you trust us and you feel this is a safe place for you to be able to do that. So, congratulations on your peak. Um, I saw Maurice unmute his mic earlier, but before Maurice goes, uh, our boss man uh, wanted me to share his peak. He said his peak was Tempest buying her mom a house this week. His team's prosperity is his goal in life, and he's grateful that her peak is also, is also a peak for his own life. So congratulations to Tempest for buying her mom a house and congratulations to our CEO as well for his peak. And so now Maurice, if you, uh, the floor is now yours. And then after Maurice, we're gonna move back over to Reverend Reginald. Yeah, I was just wanted to say that I think that from the takeaway last week, I definitely had a, a gotten a, a different, a better understanding of the valley, and it was a different, a, a, a good, a good understanding and a positive understanding of the valley, and not not necessarily being in the negative tense. And that a valley could also be a place that, of being idle, you know, and building, and getting you know, in preparation, and a place of preparation, and. The other part of it was it just kept jumping out and kept jumping out was a story that's in the Holy Quran that about Moses is titled is uh, chapter 19 and Moses travel chapter 18 Moses traveling with a wise man and it talks about you know the you know it the story was um, he was traveling with a wise man and the wise man had had to do some things that he just couldn't he just couldn't grasp. He had to poke a hole in the boat, um, and then he had to allow a wall to fall, and um, and it ties into the story about the death, you know, the murder M M Moses, and and close to you know the part where he where he killed someone, but the wise man had, um, and Moses couldn't he couldn't grasp it, and then he, the wise man told him you know that if you say something else another time I'm gonna have to part ways from you because you didn't understand that these things were for, you know, significant, bigger and big, bigger reasons. And it just reminded me of that, you know, those peaks and things, a lot of times it may not be, you know, understanding there, but the value typically is, is something for bigger, something for later on and bigger, you know, greater later, you know, so that was my takeaway from last week. I appreciate it. Thanks for letting me share. Right. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Maurice, for sharing with us. Um, that, that brings me to what you just said. 
in my personal life, the wise man for the for the the story of Moses is Antonio for me. Because Antonio told me something and I'm looking at him like I don't get it. What like what's the point? But the things that he tells us, there's a a, a larger picture and we miss it because we're so focused on here that we don't we don't just sit back and actually let the seeds fall onto fertile soil in order for them to grow. We're so busy trying to rush up the mount, rush up our peak that we don't take the time to nurture and grow in our valley. So thank you so much, Maurice, for sharing a story with us. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're going to go ahead and pass this back over to Reverend Reginald Paul. The floor is now yours, sir. All right. Now, uh, all this great stuff that I've heard, uh, it makes what we're going to talk about so interesting. I was thinking of a exercise because uh, I, I when, when I'm when I'm teaching, explaining whatever the definition is for what we are doing this evening, I like to get animated. I like to I like to picture and put myself there. So I know everybody's sitting down, but I want them to stand up. I want them to stand up for a few. Just 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 stand up. Where where have you had to stand up and 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 think about the place you was at this week. Think about being at your peak. Think about being at your valley. I didn't hear too much about a valley. I didn't hear too much or nothing about a valley. It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. I heard a lot about peaks, but brother Maurice said something that's that's in the topic of what we're gonna get ready to speak about. And one of the things we're going to talk about is being comfortable. Now, the reason why I had to stand up is because standing up might be uncomfortable. Sitting down is comfortable. Last week, we sat down the whole entire time. So when you're in your peak or your valley and you get comfortable, I want some of us to, to, to tell us what happens when you get comfortable at your peak or your valley. See, standing up is very uncomfortable because, you know, our body might tell us, hey, I can't stand up this whole time and I'm not asking you to. But I just wanted us to stand up and to feel getting out the familiar and getting to the unfamiliar. When you're at your peak or your valley, you're either in your familiar or your unfamiliar. If you're at the peak all the time, you're familiar with the peak. And in this, these chapters, it talks about your ego being at this peak. And when your ego is at their peak, you start not to see the stuff that you learned when you was in that valley. You forgot all about that valley. You forgot all about where you came from. You forgot all that struggling. You forgot all that fighting. Now you're at the top and ain't nobody hearing you. So what good is it to be at a peak when you're all alone because you got comfortable? Now I want us to sit back now and then I want us to think about where we was at this week Think about that peak of valley we was at this week, and I want us to respond about being comfortable there. Let's go. All right, y'all, the floor is open. Let's roll. Comfort in your peak or valley. We have anyone that want to follow on that sword? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see so, you, Grace. <laughs> okay, James and then Grace. Just, just to be clear, Reginald, Reverend, can you repeat that question? It's, yes, I can. When you was at your peak, when you was crawling, because you was crawling. I remember you say you was crawling. Are you comfortable crawling? Wow. Uh, to be answered, no, not at all. I'm more like trying to get to the point where I can be comfortable. If that makes any okay, sense. Okay, so the question. Yes, it does. It makes a lot of sense. But the question was, the comfortable I'm talking about, I'm going to give you an example with me. See, when I get comfortable, a lot of stuff starts going backwards for me. Because that means that, hey, everything's going good. Everything's going great. Now I can sit back and relax and chill. And I'm not supposed to work no more. Uh, I was talking to Antonio 
just a few set, a few minutes before, and I was telling him this is exactly what I told him. I say, man, your brain don't never stop moving, and I told him that's what motivates me. Is I like to be around people who brain just keeps working and working, which means you're not comfortable. You're not comfortable for where you're at. You're not comfortable because you know we get to that peak, we think we hit that success mark. Oh, that's it. We here. I ain't got to work no more. I ain't got to work as hard anymore. That means we're getting comfortable. If that helps you in any, James. <clears throat> I guess with that being said, I am, I'm still in my uncomfortability because I'm trying to get to where you just said you are, where you can relax and not work anymore. I literally have been up. I don't think – what's today's date? Today's Thursday. I think the last time I went to sleep was on Tuesday. Been up all night, all day, nonstop, because I won't stop until I get to the point where I can connect all the dots. It's funny because I believe I I just heard the words uh, Deanna was saying, and I think it was this class or the last one about taking a break. So convicting right there because I haven't taken a break in 48 hours now, and I'm going to take my break after this class. If she didn't say that, I wasn't going to take no break. That being said – I'm uncomfortable, but I understand being uncomfortable is is necessary. It's it's like the pressure. Oh. It's having that pressure is what what helps you grow. When there's no pressure, I kind of sit at a standstill. I feel not alive. So I I actually work better under the pressure than I do with no pressure. I if there's no pressure, that. I can't do any. I won't do anything until the last minute when the pressure's on. I relate to that. I really relate to that. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing with us, James. All right, I can go. Okay, Corey. All right. So um, I think you were talking about being comfortable. I think for myself, when I am comfortable, um, I reach a point where it's almost like things become second nature in my mind, but eventually what happens, I know when I get comfortable because I start making mistakes. I start making real silly mistakes that I know that it's not a mistake. I know that I wouldn't do if I wasn't, if I wasn't uncomfortable. So it's like the minute I get comfortable, I find that there's more mistakes that happen and I'm like, I become very careless. And once that starts showing up, that's when I know, okay, I'm getting into my comfort. Because <laughs> I'm just like, oh, man, I've made this mistake, like small, very, very simple mistakes that I know it's like rookie mistakes for me. But I do it because I become so com- uncomfortable that I stop paying attention and being focused on the big things anymore. Because it becomes so natural to me like hey you know I can do this I'm good and then the little bit of arrogance show up of okay I'm good I'm okay yeah I got this and then all of a sudden something happens and someone else says points this out like hey you made this mistake and I'm like I didn't make that mistake I couldn't have made that mistake but then when I look back I pay attention and I pay attention I'm like oh yeah I did make that mistake so it's just like when I become uncomfortable it's almost like I slowly start destroying myself <laughs> and sabotaging myself so I can become uncomfortable again. Mm-hmm. So that's what I really see that shows up when it comes to being comfortable. Wow. So that's Corey, exactly I- what that young man did. In, I'm sorry. No, no, that's no, exactly go ahead. What that young man, that's exactly what that young man did in this book. That's exactly what he did in the book. Because when he left the old man, he went back to his old ways. Basically, he forgot everything that old man taught him. He said, listen, he said he was trying to remember and act out what he and that old man talked about. And I had underlined trying because, you know, we can't try to pick up a cup. I mean, that's impossible. That, that, is, that is impossible. Try to pick up a pen. Try to pick up your phone. Try to do anything. You know, my slogan is Nike. Just do it. You don't have to worry about trying if you just do it. Don't worry about wrong or right. Just do it. And one thing about being comfortable, being comfortable, being stagnant, 
and we know storms coming because they don't stop at all. They don't stop at all. So if you get comfortable, you're not preparing for that storm that's coming. That young man was not prepared for what was coming. He was not prepared for his coworkers to turn his back on him. He was not prepared for his parents to tell him some of the stuff that he was being told by his parents. He was not prepared for any of that. When he thought he had it all remembered now, he was comfortable. He laid on his back, looked at them stars. He, he got it. He went back down there and he had that ego. Mm. Mm. And anybody else want to talk about what happens to them when they get comfortable? Well, I would, I would like to share something. Um, Antonio, Antonio is never comfortable, but he is always content. Um, I've learned through watching Antonio that there's a big difference between being comfortable, being comfortable and being in contentment. You know, as long as you are yearning, exceed your earnings, you will always be in bondage. So the effect of always wanting more, more fatigue, so you're tired all the time, more expenses, more anxiety, more conflict, more dissatisfaction. And they say it's, it's, it's foolish to think wealth brings happiness. But there are five damaging things that happen to you when you are not content. Wanting more brings more pain. Wanting more brings more debt. Wanting more brings more worry. It brings more problems and it brings more dissatisfaction. So know the difference between being comfortable and being content. I am I am not content, but I'm comfortable. Now, who wants to talk about that? Who wants to talk about what I just said? I will, because that's convicting. Very convicting. And I'm I'm glad you said that because it reminds me. Cause it's like I have this oh man, I gotta be real with myself here. So I have this entitlement. I feel like the world owes me everything. And when I say that, I say it like like the world has to pay me back everything that it didn't give me when I got here. And that's what I always felt like two things are gonna happen. I won't have to work for it because it'll come easily or I will have to work really hard. And if I have to work for it, I'm going to go take it because it, 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 it's, it's ours. The world is ours. When I say ours, I'm trying not to make it as selfish when I say mine, because apparently I can't take over everything because that becomes dictatorship. This is the entitled side. So forgive me guys. Um, it's, uh, the, the contentment is I'm content, but also it's like, you know, when you're content, you can't be, you can't let the contentment become the comfortability. Meaning um, if I was a millionaire, I can't stop at being a millionaire because I still need to strive to become something greater, a multimillionaire, a billionaire, a trillionaire. If I was, if I was, if I was making $7 and 25 cent an hour, I can't be, you know, of course, be grateful and be, you know, at least you have a job because there's some people who don't have a job. There's some people who can't have a job, but strive to become the manager, strive to become the, or I'm sorry, assistant manager, then the manager and climb the ladder. And it's funny because I don't care about climbing the ladder as opposed to just owning the business. Um, and that's kind of like where my comfort versus the contentment kicks in. I always find myself fighting, um, you know, I'm going to use a real personal example. I like cars and I have a, a one of my dream cars already in my possession, drive it, whoopie whoop. To me, I'm content because I have my dream car. And at the same time, I know I have my number two dream car, not the number one dream car. If I could have one, it would be this one. If I could have, if I couldn't get that one, I would get this one. I'm at the, if I couldn't get that one, I got this one. So I'm at the second best option. I always have a slogan for myself called first choice. 
first choice means choose the one thing that you truly want so you don't end up spending money on the second cheaper item, the second item that was cheaper, or you kind of like, it's like the great value choice. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the same stuff as the, the branded item, but you know what you truly want. So might as well get what you want and be done with it. If you buy cheap in, in mechanics, if you buy cheap tools, they'll break and you'll end up spending twice the money which costs more than just buying the one tool one time. Here's some math. If the one good tool costs $75 and the cheap tool costs $50 and it breaks and you spend $50 again, you just spent $100 versus $75 the first time. So it's like contentment and comfortability. The contentment level would be, for me, it would be the, the buying the one thing or I guess – Doing whatever it is you're supposed to do the first time. If you don't do it right the first time, you obviously got time to do it the second time. Here's a short story to help that stick. One time, it was on, it was on my dad's birthday, which is also Go Skate Day, and that's also the day I have to cut the yard. And I decided that day, I wake up and tell my dad, happy birthday, dad, and I said it quickly so that I can uh, hurry up and go skate. And he goes, hey, before you go skate, cut the yard. I'm like, wow, you should have woke, should have told me that at 8 in the morning. But I already knew better. So I ended up, um, Harriet, I rushed through the yard. I cut it real quick. It's like when you get a haircut, you don't want them to miss the lines or the fade. So it's like messing up. You missed a spot. I missed a spot in the yard. I take off to downtown, which is like two hours, or not two hours, an hour away at the time. And he calls me in the middle of skating. Hey, son, I need you to come back to the house and finish cutting the yard. Dad, what do you mean? I just cut the yard. Like, go look at it. He goes, yeah, I'm looking at it. You missed some spots. I knew I rushed through it. I didn't realize I missed spots. I'm like, Dad, I can't come back right now because I'm an hour away. I rode the bus, and I am not trying to cut the yard. I can cut it tomorrow. Bro, get your A home right now and cut this yard. And, and that was a lesson that taught me do it right the first time or you obviously got time to do it again from that day forward it, it almost that's that honestly is one of the root things to my whole entrepreneurship journey it's just doing it right the first time it takes longer but it's when you get down the road it'll it'll um it'll save you time later down the road doing it right the first time going all of that to say contentment and comfortability the uncomfort comes in taking the time because we want everything now. If you take the time to put in the work that no one wants to put in, you can um, you can have what you want. It just takes time. And then you'll be comfortable later. There's a song that I'm listening to that goes, I work while they dream, so I eat while they don't. And then that was that was basically the long story. Sure. Yes, ma'am. I'm breathing. I'm out of breath because I just got through eating. <laughs> and uh, I need to work out. <laughs> and I'm excited, too, to, like, talk about all of this. Awesome. So that, that's basically where I was at right now. Thank you, James. Thank you so much for sharing. I do have a response to what you just said. Um, but before that, we, I Grace, you had something that you wanted uh, to to speak on earlier, so I want to make sure we get Grace, and then I will respond to James to what you said, and then Justin, I did see you just unmute your mic, so Grace, I'm going to respond to James, and then Justin Frazier. Contentment and comfort. They kind of go hand in hand, you know, a little bit. But whether you're in the peak or the valley, when you get comfortable, you get content. And sometimes you shouldn't be content within your comfort. Like Reggie was saying earlier, whether you're in your peak or your valley and you get comfortable, I had a mentor when I was in multi-level marketing, and he would always say, you always want to be prepared for war in a time of peace. 
So when, when it's peace time, that's not the time to be comfortable. When it's peace time, you want to make sure you get prepared for when wartime happens. And so when you're comfortable and I'm chilling, oh, I didn't hit my goal this month. I'm chill. I didn't hit my goal this month, and it's only mm-hmm. the 15th of the month. I'm chilling. No, <laughs> you don't do that. Do not do that. You hit your goal, great. Keep going. Because if I get comfortable and it's I'm only halfway through the month, and then I got 15 days, I'm thinking I got 15 days to chill. Mm, by the first of the next month, you're going to still be feeling comfortable. You're not going to want to try and hit anything. You want to keep moving and keep going. And keep striving, and it's not it's not saying, oh man, I hit my goal. Cool, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go and, and get some more. Well, if you keep that, keep the attitude of I hit the goal in the less amount of time. Well, continue. You want to since you hit the goal by the fifteenth, go hit next month's goal by the end of the month, by the thirtieth or the thirty first. So then that way you're staying on track. You're staying on track, and you're doing it in less time. Is the moment you get comfortable is the moment you get lax, lax a days ago, and too relaxed. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grace, because what I'm about to say, you, it's all about the energy that you put out there too. If you're putting out, I'm going to hit my goal on the 15th, and then you, the rest of the week, I'm, the rest of the month, I'm going to put out this energy that it's like, oh, okay. I'm a chill. Then you're going to get that same chill energy back. You know, I need, I, I want everyone to understand that you can have everything that you want. You, you just can't have it all at the same time. See, whenever you put your, whenever you put out energy, the universe owes you a return on that energy. The trick is to understand you're always owed a return on your energy. Always. Be it, be it whatever kind of vibration you put out there, you are always owed a return on that energy. So if you put out the energy, I'm going to only work my hardest up until the 15th, and then I'm going I'm to coast the rest of the way because now I'm comfortable, you're owed a return on that energy. And you will always get, you will always get back your same energy. Always get back your same energy. So James, as you said in the beginning, you are entitled and you should feel a sense of entitlement, but not the way you said it. Your sense of entitlement is destruction to others and based, based in the system of lack. See, the universe's sense of entitlement is based in prosperity and the uplifting of you so you can build up others. Can you break that down for me? Yes, sir. If I'm always putting out the energy of I'm entitled, I deserve this, this is mine. I'm not going to care what I do to others. I'm not going to care how I treat others. I'm not going to care what my feeling of entitlement does to somebody else. That's the sense of entitlement that brings destruction and it's based on lack. And I'm only speaking from personal experience. But the universe's sense of entitlement is based on prosperity. The grass is entitled to grow, but it does not fight to grow. It does not hurt others to grow. It does not push the other stalks of grass out of the way to grow. It grows in harmony. See, our... And I'm saying our for a reason. Our definition of entitlement is I've suffered enough. I've done enough for other people. I deserve this. So I don't care what you think, what you say, what you do. I'm going to do whatever I want to do when I want to do it, how I want to do it. And correct me if I'm wrong. It's spot on. Okay. 
that that comes from this that's destructive and it comes from lack because you're telling people you know what i've done this and since you didn't do for me what i want you to do i'm gonna take whatever i want that's our that's our definition how we think about entitlement I'm entitled to this. I'm going to take whatever I want. If that means I have to take it from you, I'm going to take it because I'm entitled to it. But if we focus on the universe's sense of entitlement, there is no lack. So whatever you have, I'm going to be grateful that you have it. And I'm going to, and that's the energy that I'm going to put out there that I'm grateful that you have what you have. And when I put out that energy, the universe has to give me a return on that, which means the universe is going to give me that gratefulness times 10. <sighs> James, I completely understand your mindset. Trust me, I do. Because when I hit a certain age, I was like, you know what? I did what you told me to do, when you wanted me to do it, how you wanted me to do it, where you wanted me to do it, and how many times you wanted me to do it. I want one thing in this earth, on this, on this, on this planet, and that's just to be me. So since you're not going to give me what I want, I'm entitled to take it because it's my life. And I lived a destructive life that entire time, destroying others in the process. But the moment you decide, you know what? I'm going to be humble. I'm not even going to go that route. I'm grateful that I have what I have. I'm grateful that I live where I live. I'm grateful for the car that I drive. Oh, my brother just got a new car. You know, I'm so happy you got that new car. I'm grateful that you got that new car. My mom just bought a new house. Mom, I'm, so, I'm grateful that you bought that new house. My best friend just bought... My best friend just bought her mom a house. Girl, I'm so happy you bought your mama a house. I'm, I'm so proud and happy for you. And when you put that energy out there, you are owed a return on that energy. And that's an energy of prosperity. So when it comes to your entitlement, think of it as an entitlement of, I've put out gratitude. So I'm entitled to receive gratitude from the universe. Not, this is what I want, when I want, how I want it. I don't care how I'm going to get it. So it's mine, I'm going to take it. Just be grateful. Hey, and Deanna, next time I see you, I'll give you a big hug. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm like cheesing over here. I'm smiling. I feel like I just got a whooping, but I needed it. Like, a, like for the correction, because that's really good correction. And it, it's awesome because it's like that stuff I believe people in my life should have told me, but no one told me. And it's, it's probably they didn't know any better themselves. So I definitely received that. And that's amazing. Yeah. And, and there was one more part that you mentioned, like the like this is how I show gratitude. Like I, I learned this too really young. Don't envy, admire. So, like, today I went to go do my workout this morning, and I saw this older gentleman get out of a porch. And I'm like, dude, he happened to park next to me. I'm like, wow, bro, you look like me in a few years. I'm looking at myself in a few years. Like, it just looked like another successful young man. I'm like, dude, that's, that's awesome. And, and that's why I say admire, don't envy. I could have had the mentality like, oh, man, look at him parking his porch next to me. But I'm like, that, that's me in the next few years. Hopefully months, not years, but yes, that's how I see it. And when you put that energy out there, you are owed a return on that energy. So keep that energy. And before, Corey, before I come to you, Reverend Reginald Paul, do you have anything that you would like to say? And, uh, and I mean, you, you, you said it. You, you broke that down well. I just, uh, when I think about it, I just think about the word comfortable and what the word comfortable does for me. And uh, the word comfortable does different to everybody that's on this phone call. You know, uh, 
it, it's, it's a different meaning for everybody on this phone call. Uh, comfortable for me, I get bored. I, I get bored quick. Uh, I know my daddy told me, rest, rest, rest easy. My daddy told me when I was in early childhood, uh, teacher called him, say, hey, he he finishes all his work, but after he finishes all his work, he just he's just hard to control. And my daddy told him, well, you better give him some more work. And that's just been me, period. I mean, the more that I have on my plate, the better off I'm going to be because if I don't have nothing on my plate, then my mind's going to go everywhere. And then that's when ego kicks in, just just like in the book, just like what happened to that young man, man. It's, I I was focused on this young man in these three chapters for the simple fact that I'm, I'm watching maturity at his best. I'm watching a man grow. I'm watching a man grow because as he looks at that old man, he's looking at himself in the future. That's why I like him and the old man. Uh, and I'm really appreciating what I'm getting from him, especially he went up there and he came back down and tried to do what they talked about. He forgot all about it and his ego got in his way because he got comfortable, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and, and, and just lost it. And then he had to look back up and remember. But what I wanted to say was sometimes you don't learn in the valley if, if you don't learn in the valley if, if you don't pay attention. Mm. You, you can't, you can't, you, you can't get it. Uh, man, the, the, some people so used to being at this, this plateau, that's the word I want to use, this plateau that they don't even want to go back up there. Mm. It's too tiring. How many times in the book did he say he was tired? He was tired. How many times in the book did he say he was tired? He's, <laughs> he mentioned it a lot of times. He said he, he was tired. He looked up at it. He was like, "Now nah, I was just waiting in the morning. But the more he sat up there and waited and procrastinated, the more that stuff started eating his mind up. And then he had to get that go juice and just get up and go. And every time he just made up his mind to get up and go, every time he just went up and head and go did it, he learned something very valuable. What I appreciated was the second time that he went to go do it, he took a pen and a notebook, and he took notes the second time he went. Now, before we get to that next subject, uh, let's go back to the two that had something to say because I'm going to stay right there where I'm at because it has something to do with that plateau. But go ahead and, and, and let the other two, I know Corey, his hand up. That wasn't his hand, but that was an animation <laughs> hand. Yes, we had. Uh, I thought there was great short arm that I was looking at. I'm sorry, sis. I, I had to throw that in there. I had to throw that in there, sis. <laughs> we have Corey and then we have Justin. Go ahead, Corey. Okay. I know you were talking just now about being content. And when I hear about content, I hear it's being able to let go of the morality that you have when it comes to being in a peak or a valley. So what that means when I say morality, I mean more like giving up, whether it be a good thing or a bad thing, if it's a right thing or wrong thing when it comes to being in the valley. And by letting that go, you can actually be able to see the beauty of what's in front of you. And you can become so much more aware of, hey, this is what's happening right now. This is, this is how I can help someone right now. Or, you know, or, or you can just be okay with whatever action you're taking because you're being present in the moment and not really adding any meaning to what you're doing or where you are. And by giving up that meaning, it allows you to be able to see so much clearer because you're in a space of nothingness. And through that space of nothingness, there's like this, you can see almost everything and you have that ability to be able to um, see more action and see more possibility of what could be your next step or what couldn't be your next step and you get to choose what that thing would be. So I can understand when you mention, because I know for myself when I'm content, that's where, that's the space that I'm in. And um, when I'm comfortable, that's where I'm talking, you know, I kind of spoke about it before, it was just like, that's where I start making mistakes and everything else like that. Because I'm still putting meaning to seeing something like, hey, I'm comfortable, that means I'm good which means I'm, I'm adding to a meaning, which means that now I start to become careless. But if I'm actually really aware of what's happening, aware of where I am, and not adding meaning to my situation, 
then it allows me to create in the moment. So that's really what I'd want to share there. Wow. You, you said a lot that Antonio has been teaching for years. He always tells me to be present where your feet are. And when you are comfortable and you make a meaning of everything, you cannot be present because your brain is going 50 miles an hour. And in that comfort and making and, and having a definition for everything that's happening, there's no way you can be content because every little thing has a meaning. But if you just be in the moment, like just really just be in the moment. Amazing things happen. So Corey, thank you so very much for sharing. Thank you very much. And um, Reverend Reginald Paul, I'm going to go ahead and, and let Mr. Justin go. And then we're coming right back to you. So okay. Justin, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, when you were asking about comfort zone, what comes to mind with me is gratitude because whatever level of life you're at, whether it's the ground or your version of the top, you have to have gratitude for the present. Otherwise, there'll never be enough. So you can have everything that you want. And if you're not gratitude for that, eventually, you know, the hourglass is going to have a little pierce in it and it's going to start to slip away from you. Elevation and gratitude in your presence, from my experience, all go hand in hand. Like James was talking about his car. He wanted to have a dream car. That's cool. Everybody can go out and buy their dream car. But what happens when you want your passive income to pay for it? What happens when you have to get, you can have your dream car, but you want to have another car in your company name because you want your company to be able to, to buy enough property units to pay for your car and your houses. So it becomes a different level of game. But if you don't have gratitude along the way, nothing will ever be good enough and eventually you'll get older, older, older and time will pass you by and you come to times like this and you're like, well, what have I done over the past couple of years? Your life starts to put, like you start to write, you ever wrote a statement, uh, like your death statement in business and you say, okay, what have I done about that today? What have I done to this day? And that starts to flash to you and you say, well, I'm not doing enough because the living in the present is everything. <laughs> so, like when you go assets over liabilities, yeah, you got to build the foundation to do that. And the definition of insanity is doing the same thing twice. So if you don't catch it in your valley, if you have a mm -hmm. mindset and some people's circumstances is the reason why their mindset is the way they're at and their comfort level goes to the puppet master of their circumstances. And you can see that almost like a wild dog. You can see that boom. If the mind doesn't change, the body's soon going to demise because it's only going to leave you. So, so if this gratitude is not in the matrix of that transition, you know that it's only a matter of time before he hit the brick wall because his mindset doesn't change. So he has some gratitude for where he's at and, and focus on where he wants to go. But abundance and, and, and comfort level, that, that's only like financial, financial part of abundance to me is only one slice of a pie. It's a very vital organ, but it's only one slice of a pie. What about health? What about having meaningful relationships? What about having healthy relationships with your family or friends or people that really want to see you win? What about having people that really want to, that really are there for you, for you and have you happy? What about those type of things? You know, self-respect, dignity, confidence, having your swagger, all that together and having a purpose for what you're doing and then being able to give back and service to your community and your people. That's other slices of abundance that's not just financial. Mind you, you can't not have the full power without the financial. But so when you're in your comfort zone, you have to have gratitude for everything that's there. I learned a lot from what you were telling about the five pillars of comfort. But to go back to what James is asking, if you don't have those other slices of abundance and you're not gratitude for where you're at, there'll never be enough. And you'll wind up wanting what you had before, but thought it wasn't good enough. Mm. That's mm -hmm. all I have to add to that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Justin, nice very much. Addition. Yes, yes, it was. I agree with you, Reverend Reginald Paul. Uh, mm -hmm. Gratitude. You hear it in his voice. Yeah. He said, he said that with his chest. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Gratitude. If you're not grateful, 
I can't begin to there you there's a consistency you have to have when it comes to your gratitude. You can't be grateful one day and ungrateful the next. Because again, the energy you put out, you're owed a return on that energy from the universe. So if one day you're putting out massive gratitude and the next day you're like, man, look, I'm tired of being here. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. But the next day you're like, universe, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for my car. I'm so grateful for my house. <laughs> I'm so grateful. Hey. <laughs> yeah, y'all know it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it right now. Stop it. Stop it. That's us. You, yes. Yeah, yes. you cannot be upset when you don't get what you want. You're putting out energy that is literally maxing itself out. But if you if you wake up and if you wake up every single day with gratitude. Tempest said, gratitude gets you through the valley. It sustains you on the peak. Gratitude gets you through the valley, and it sustains you on the peak. Thank you so much, Tempest, for sharing that with us. Your valley is where you have the bumps, the bruises, where you go through the education and the learning process. So if you are not grateful while you are in your valley, you won't you won't be able to stay on your peak long. Gratitude is everything. Gratitude is everything. Please don't miss that. And I'm telling y'all from personal experience, gratitude is everything. Don't miss a day without thinking, being grateful. If you if you didn't if you didn't show gratitude today for anything and you lost it the next day, how would you feel? If you forgot to show gratitude for something today and you woke up and it wasn't there the next day, how would you feel? If you weren't grateful for your house, your car, your children, your family, and you woke up the next day and everything that you did not show gratitude for was gone, what would you lose? Just, just think about that for a second. Think about that for a second. Uh, Reginald Maurice has his hand up. So, Tempest, that, yes. So, Maurice, we're going to go ahead. The floor is yours. And then we're going <coughs> right over to uh, Reverend Reginald. Okay. You know, um, as I was listening to um, Justin and um, everyone else speaking, you know, when you mentioned gratitude, the first thing that jumped out at me is that um, one thing, well, no, I heard James, something James said, you know, he reminded me of um, measure twice and cut once. <laughs> he talked, he told the story about the grass cutting and about doing things the right the first time so you don't have to pay extra the second time. It just reminded me of, um, you know, when you doing some things and around, doing construction work, you know, that just, it's the same thing as measure twice and cut once. Cause if you measure once and get it wrong, you'd be buying new, new material. And gratitude, you know, for me, it's in the valley is where gratitude is learned. I earned is the, in, in, in certain, in the valley, you know, you earn, I earn, I earn gratitude there because often you go to back to the valley or go to the valley because you didn't learn the lesson the first time. And sometimes you have to go through it and bump your head again, you know, and hit that valley, hit that, that valley. And then um, you may, you know, learn to say, okay, then I get it the first time. And I only say that as, as a personal um, note, you know, from having been incarcerated more than once, you know, and it was time to, <laughs> that, you know, okay, I got it this time, I got it this time, and I was battling, I was young, and I was struggling, and I'm like, okay, I got it this time, but I was doing it my way, and I wanted to mm -hmm. do it my way, and I went back, and I got, you know, got it, and then after a while, you know, it wasn't until I surrendered to the wise man, so to speak, or it didn't necessarily have to be a physical wise man, but surrendered and gave up my way, gave up my will, and surrendered to 
a way that um, I didn't necessarily know the outcome of it, but I just knew the way that and what I was doing wasn't working. <laughs> it wasn't, you know, it wasn't getting me the result. And like somebody said, you know, insanity is doing the same thing, expecting doing same, same doing the same thing, expecting different results. And um, but that's what I wanted to share about gratitude. You know, for me, gratitude is earned in the valley. You know, gratitude helps you to be able to uh, help, help you to be able to to appreciate the peaks. So when you you do you when you get you know and then you know and staying humble, you know, and staying humble, and the valleys keep you humble, and it helps remind you. Now there's not a time that I ever want to go back to that place. I ain't got no, there's no doubt, nothing I'm going to do anything to ever get there. <laughs> do not, it is nothing that will, you know, but it took enough of those valleys and enough of those, those mistakes and enough of those hard knocks to get to a place that I'm able to appreciate that enough. And I'm never comfortable. And comfort for me is fear. When I get comfortable, I get afraid. I have to keep going because that means that there's a very possibility of going back to a place that I didn't want to be before, you know, because comfort, like, like so many of us, everybody said on about when you get comfortable, you get complacent, you make mistakes and you lose. So that's what I want to share. Thanks for letting me share that. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that Maurice. Seriously. It, uh, while you were talking Maurice, I don't, I'm going to repeat what Tempest said. She said, gratitude gets you through the valley and it sustains you on the peak. Whoever needs to copy and paste that, write it on a sheet of paper, put it on your mirror, put it on your wall. That, that was... Just remember that. Gratitude gets you through the valley and it sustains you on the peak. Because when we first started this class, we were saying how your valley is where all the hard work happens. Your valley is where you do, your valley is like your library, is where you do your studying, you do your learning, you do your education, and it allows you to stay on the peak longer. But if you don't have gratitude for the education, if you don't have gratitude for the pain, if you don't have gratitude for the scrapes and the bruises, you won't be able to sustain on the peak. So again, Tempest, thank you so much for posting, for posting that. And now I'm going to pass it over to Reverend Reginald Paul. The floor is all yours. Uh, again, it's a lot of strength being passed out and I just want to I want to add some more muscle to, to the strength. Uh, one thing I want us to know is that uh, we are not our peak or our valley. We are not that. We are not our peak or our valley. You are not what, where, where you're at. Let me say that again. You are not where you're at, OK? Let that soak in. Now, it seems like the young man was doing a lot of traveling, back and forth, up and down, back and forth, up and down. And the way that I read it and understood it, he wanted to take a, he, I think he went up and down, back and forth so much that he had, anybody took a long trip somewhere in the car and somebody had to go to the bathroom or somebody was hungry, so we had to stop. We created a plateau, a breaking point. I'm tired. Didn't, 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 didn't somebody mention that earlier? Hey, I'm tired. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of tired of being here. I'm tired of being there. How about I'm going to just chill out right here. I'm cool with being right here. I don't want no more assignments. I don't want nobody putting no value on me. I, I don't want nobody telling me this, telling me that. I'm going to sit right here because I ain't got to hear nobody but myself. And when we're in that position, it's cool. Hey, 
The honeymoon always cool. I don't care what we do. And everything we do is a honeymoon. But you know what? That honeymoon don't last forever. That honeymoon does not last forever. When that honeymoon over, you will find out what you really in. And we talking about peaks and valley in the book. And I'm talking about the honeymoon that that young man was facing when he was at that peak. And then when that honeymoon was over at that peak, that boy went right back to that valley. And then when he wanted to go back to the peak, he said, you know what? I'm going to chill right here in this plateau. And I'm going to just get comfortable in this plateau. One thing about being comfortable in the plateau, after all that relaxing, after all that me time, because you know, hey, 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 I ain't the only one that sit up here and get some me time. You know that me time. You know, you light your little candles and you buy yourself and you got kids. And you went off and go bought your own meal and ate your meal in private and came back. They have same me time. So you keep doing that, you're going to get tired. You understand? You, you keep on separating from, from being in, in line, from, from being with that one accord. Like my daddy always told me, you, you're going to miss something. But you run away from it, you're going to run right into it. So what he did was, by taking that break at that plateau, he got into a familiar position when he was on his back. And when he was on his back, the first time he was at that peak, he saw them stars. Now, mind you, that he rolled down that peak, like we said last week, rolled down that peak, went through what he went through, looked up there again and said, man, it's too tiring. I don't want to go through all that to get there. I'm going to take a break right here. And when he got tired from taking that break, he looked up at that, that sky again, and he seen them stars. You know, that boy got right back up. But this time, he brought something with him. That time, he made a decision. He said, instead of going up there and hearing what the man was telling me, I'm going to listen. Because hearing and listening is two different things. Because when you listen, that means you're actually going to do what you heard. And that's the difference of what he did. Because he took something to go write notes on. So when you're at your plateau, how do you feel when you're at your plateau? That is the question. That is the question I want anybody, somebody, anybody scream. Now, anybody talk about, the, <laughs> throw your hands in. I want to talk about the plateau. We're talking about the plateau. And in the book, it talks about the plateau. What do you do when you're in your plateau? Mm. The floor is open, James. <clears throat> In the plateau, there's a list of things. The first one that I could think of is stay humble, help those who are not there get there. So it's like it's like uh, people in the valley are in the pit, and when you're at the peak, you're outside the pit. You can reach down and help someone out of the pit. Those are the two things I have right now. I'll come back. All right. Thank you so much, James, for sharing with us. Reverend Reginald Paul, do you have a response to what James just said? I mean, that's, it's, it's, always, it's always a good way to look at what, what other people's mindsets at, first and foremost. Because a uh, person like me, I can get something from somebody else's meaning up their plateau. And, and that's the purpose of this phone call. Honestly, that's the purpose of this phone call. When, when the question is asked, statement is being said, is for everybody to grab onto something and add it to their they personal bookshelf, their they personal trophy case, and, and use it. You know, And it's something that he said that I live by that. And he say, put that hand down there and grab somebody. That, that's something that I live by. That's the only reason why I do anything that I do is for the simple fact that to face the joy that you see from getting somebody out there stuck position, getting somebody out there plateau, man, that's the greatest feeling in the world, man. That's the greatest feeling in the world to me. For, for, for even going into the plateau and, 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 and telling, the, telling the people that's in the plateau, hey, 
We're going to break for a little bit, man, but we're supposed to get back on this mission. We got a mission to fulfill. There's people watching us. There's people taking notes with us. There's people that's depending on us. And we got to get out of our comfort zone. We can't give up right now. We can't bury ourselves right now. And that's that's the one thing, like I said, that, that he said, that going back and, and, and getting somebody. That carpenter said he didn't care about the 99 that he had. He cared about that one that he lost that started hiding in that plateau. That's where that sheet went to that plateau. All right. Thank you so much. I, I'm actually, if it's okay with you, Reverend Reginald, going to answer your question. There's, um, when I read it, I highlighted it because I had to answer this question for myself. And it says, what was this plateau for him? Was he just taking a well-deserved break and resting? Or was he here to escape? And if so, what was he escaping from? I can tell you every single time that I've gone on my plateau, it's been to escape. And not necessarily to escape people, but to escape myself. Because I didn't, I didn't show gratitude in my valley. So as I was going up my peak, it started getting too much. So I had to escape from my prosperity and go to a plateau. And then I got comfort. I got comfortable in my plateau, which leads to what Corey said earlier. I, I start make, making stupid decisions and destroying myself. See, the plat what I learned is a plateau can be for many things. It can be a place of rest. It can be a place to refresh or it can be a place to escape and forget. And it all depends on how you use your plateau and what your plateau is will determine how soon you come out of your plateau. Because if you're just in there for a legitimate rest, you're not going to be in there long. You're going to be a, a Reggie and a James, like, hey, yo, come on, let's go. But if you're in a plateau like I am, I'm the person you trying to pull out the plateau. So when you're in your plateau, please make sure that you are asking yourself, am I here to truly rest or am I here to escape? And what am I escaping from? Because if you ask yourself those questions and you do not lie to yourself and you actually answer the questions, then you'll know if your plateau is a positive place for you to be or a destructive place for you to be. Well, that, 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 all I see is a big stepping stone. All I see is a... a a mini Kevin Hart thug ladder. No matter, either way, either way, it's a stepping stone. You're taking a rest. If you're going on a travel, you got to take rest. Uh, if you're going to hide, it's still a stepping stone because you can't hide forever. You can only hide for so long. I mean, that's that's not going to be too much work because whatever you're hiding from is going to find you. Yeah. So you still got to get up. So you still got to use that as a, a, a stepping stone. No matter what the plateau is, it's, it's a stepping stone to get to where you need to be. It's always going to be a learning lesson. It's always going to be where you learn from. And just like in a book, a plateau is an awesome place where you can change your behavior. Your behavior puts you where you at, where you act, the way you talk, the way you interact. The way you move, that determines where you're at. Your behavior. And sometimes, you know, well, not sometimes. I even I scratch that word out. You know what? You know where that fear comes from? You know how that fear musters up? How, how, how it just comes to the fear, fear of 
of going anywhere because uh, mm -hmm. your ego is is because who you think you are. I'm not doing that. I ain't got to do that to. I'm, do you know who I am? Do you know that? Do you know who you talking to? What's your mindset? What's your direction? What's your angle? But what you? Well, how you trying to? How you? How you trying to get there? You trying to get there the fastest way you possibly can? You want to be the rabbit? Huh? We all know what happened to that rabbit. Huh? He still lost. Mm -hmm. Change your behavior. A plateau is a good place to where you can change your behavior because you ain't doing them, but at a standstill. And when you're at a standstill, that means everything is moving fast. What I mean by everything moving fast, everything that you possibly done, no matter if you was in a peak or valley, because it's the same thing, that's where you need to change your behavior. You know why I had to change my behavior? It's in a place where another young man spoke of that I thought was the valley. Can I, can I talk to y'all for a minute? Go ahead. Let me tell you what I thought what the valley was. I thought being in Galveston County Jail was a valley. But the reason why I thought it was a valley because I never spent that much time there. I never spent time there. I, I didn't know what was there. I just heard. How many people just heard about a place that you're trying to get to or that you went to and you just heard about it, but you never experienced it? But the person that ain't never experienced it, so could tell you what it's like. They really could tell you what it's like, but never been there before. You know, they, 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 they broke it down. When you get there, there's nothing like what they explain. So again, you know, I'm talking about Gales County Jail. You know, that's horrible. It's a horrible place. Do you know that's why I changed my behavior? Do you know that's why I changed the way that I was thinking? Do you know that that was my resting place? Do you know, before I even went in, my last sermon was called Rest in Him? And you know what he did to me? Be careful what you pray for. That man sat me down for, I thought I was going to be in there for two months. Man, I was gone for seven. Now, from a person that ain't never been to jail, probably about one day for some tickets, you sat me down in there, that mean I had to adopt and adapt. And I was not trying to adapt. Do you understand that? I was not trying to adapt, but I had to. And I'm going to tell y'all something. I tried to sleep. You know, Deanna, you said hi, right? Oh, I tried to sleep all them months away. You ever tried to sleep in a sardine can when you six foot six? With the lights on when they say it's lights on? With the mattress made out of thin crust piece of dough at Domino's? And you got all kinds of people in there that smell like a junior varsity locker room. Do you know that that was the best place to get some rest, to change your behavior? Because you are going to remember everything. Everything. I mean, when I saw a doorknob, I, man, I appreciated the doorknob. When I saw a paper towel, I appreciated the paper towel. I mean, everything that we that we just take for granted oh, came so important. And while I was sitting in there, I was laying in the bed trying to sleep my wife away, running from my problems, run, running from being with one accord, running from the old man's teachings from the young man that was in the book, running from the teachers. Do you know the teachers came to me and they was walking around and they kept saying, prayer call, prayer call. And I kept trying to ignore it. I kept trying to hide. I don't want to talk to you, God, I'm mad at you. You told me that I was at my peak. I'm, I'm in my peak. I'm in my peak. You lied to me. And he just kept coming and kept going. So I got up. Just like the young man in the book. Man, I'm, I'm talking about the book, man. Just like the young man in the book, I got up. I just went on here and went. I went. When I went and got in that prayer circle and I opened up my mouth, do you know how many souls were saved? Because I actually did 
and changed my behavior and did what he called me to do, he sent me to my peak. Mm. I thought I was in the valley. He sent me to my peak. Put me in that place, started praying, and, 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 and got out of my comfort zone and changed some of my behaviors. Because every time I talked, he was talking to me. I wasn't even talking to them. I've never seen so many tears for so many hard guys in my life. All the hugs and all that sentimental, unconditional love for men that needed that. I'm talking about come and give you a hug and say, I needed that man. Crying, bawling out. I'm talking about tattoos right here, all right here. They had tattoos on their teeth. I mean, bawling out, crying. Said we needed that. We needed that. And man, by the midpoint that I was in there, man, I said, you know what, man? This is the greatest place to be because I didn't have no worries. He gave me everything I needed. When I rested in that plateau, he gave me everything I needed because I surrendered. Did somebody use that word earlier? Did somebody say surrender? Yes. I could just picture how Tipper said it, the yes part, because you know, Females say yes different than a man do. Yes. I can just hear it. Yes, Lord. I can hear it. But I, that's how I felt. That's how I felt. That's exactly how I felt when I when I heard, when I, when I surrendered. I surrendered. I surrendered. And he set me free. I'm not talking about physical free. I ain't talking about ATW. That's, that that means all the way home. And when I got out, I came out running. I came out running. I ran right to my peak after leaving another peak. Then asked, can I go back down to the plateau in the valley that I came from so I could go get the other people so I could tell them how beautiful it is up here so we can lay down on our back like the young man and look at them stars. And I'm looking at everybody right now and we shining. I mean, take a look at yourself. Look what you done went through this week. Look what they put in front of us with our device. Look what they put in front of us in our homes. Look what we see. Nothing but fear. Nothing but death. Nothing positive. So when I come on here, this is what I look for. I look for the laughs. I look for the strength. I look for the encouragement. I look for everybody that's in their peak. I look for everybody that's in their valley. And I want to tell them just like the book told us. You are not where you at. You are neither a peak or a valley. I don't know about y'all, but if it was time to shout, I would shout. They'll put me on my apartment. So I'm pretty sure I would, I would shake up these walls. Appreciate. No matter where you're at, appreciate where you're at. Because you're there for a reason. Even if you wanted to be there, even if you was put there on accident, Appreciate where you at, because I, hey, I'm telling you, when I appreciated that onesie that I had on, my time went by fast. When I appreciated, when I appreciated the situation that I was in, where the guards treat you like they, they, you are beneath them, and I just treated them with nothing but respect, I learned something. I learned something, just like I'm learning something tonight. I hope everybody on here learning something tonight. And not only will we learn it, the most important thing is, do like that young man did the second time when he got that notebook and that pencil. And he took the notes, because he said he refused. Let me tell you what he did. The boy said he refused. Let me tell you what he did. He said he refused to go back down there in that valley and go back down there and do the same thing that he did. I done heard this three to four times today. The definition of insanity. That young man in that book say he's not supposed to do that again. I heard another young man talk about the same place that I've been to. He say he went twice. One is good enough for me, by the way. Smother baloney. They fed me that. I ate that. Smother baloney. Anyway, I got to keep the humor, man. I got to keep humor in it. Because, you know, you know, it's serious times right now. Man, we got to loosen up. Got to loosen up. We got to loosen up. When you're climbing up a, a, a peak, you got to be, you can't be stiff climbing up no peak. You can't be stiff climbing up no peak. Be stiff. 
see what happens. You know, last week we was talking about how we was going to roll down. You going to do more than that? Or you going to hear boom, 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 ah, leg. You going to hear bones cracking. Everything going to snap. You go up there stiff if you want to with that attitude. You know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Being stiff. That means, you, you know, being ignorant. That, that's stiff. That, I'm just going to put in the words where it fit at, you know. You're going up there with that with that ego. I'm, I'm better than thou. You know, I'm here. This is where you should be. You, you, you know you know how I go. You know how I skin sometimes can get us there, you know. But like we've been saying, man, appreciate that gratitude. There's a lot of stuff I'm doing that I said I wouldn't do. I wouldn't sit up here and listen to somebody in the morning time repeat positive things to me and say the same thing over and over again. I promise you I was not into that. And I tried it, y'all. I, I, I put on my Nikes and tried it. I just did it. You know what? I had some of the best days doing that. That helped me get clean up that I was loose. I stretched. You know, stretching is that meditation in the morning, praying. That's stretching. We should stretch during these times that they're trying to tell us it's just horrible and bad and I'm looking at it. They don't look horrible. Y'all don't look horrible to me. Y'all don't look bad to me. You know, God puts the people in a, in a place together so we can all look at each other and, and get strength and draw strength from each other and, and look what's happening, man. Ooh. Deanna, get it. Just help. <laughs> help. We're going to be on here until 1130. <laughs> The the greatest thing, and we keep coming back to it, that has been said this entire call is gratitude. There is no way you can survive without it. If you, if you've never experienced the pain of something, you will never be able to be grateful for walking without pain. You never, the whole thing, you never know, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. But if you, if you are consistently in gratitude, your well will never run dry. You have to understand that the gratitude that you put out in the valley is yours to have on your peak. The less you put out in your valley, the less time you get to spend on your peak. And that's what we miss. We see, we see the people that we admire up on their peaks. But what did they do in their valleys? You hear the greatest of the great talk about gratitude. You hear them say, when I was here, I was grateful. And because I was grateful there, I got here. And I've been able to stay here because I, can, I remain grateful. One of the greatest things that I've ever learned is the energy you put out, you get back. And it took me forever to actually understand that. It took the reflection of a child to show me the energy I was putting out. Because I was receiving that energy back through the reflection of a child. The energy you put out will come back to you. And it doesn't come back to you in just a little bit. It comes back to you in abundance. The more gratitude you put out, can you imagine how your life would be? If you're grateful for just waking up in the morning and taking a breath, how many more mornings will you be able to wake up and breathe easy? If you're grateful for being able 
to sit up in your bed and stand up unassisted, how many more days will you be able to have to be able to do that same thing? And if you are grateful for every single day spent in your valley, how long do you believe you'll be able to sustain on your peak? Reginald said he was sent to his peak. Reginald said he was sent to his peak. How many of you have been sent to your peak, but because you didn't, you weren't grateful to understand where you were sent, you missed it. You completely missed it. What he believed was a valley was actually his peak. What you believe to be a plateau could be your valley. Gratitude is everything. It, it puts out a level of energy that cannot be described. If you just do it, just just be grateful. Just be grateful. Be grateful for the moment. Be grateful for the moment I started becoming grateful for just breathing was the moment that I was able to receive and learn. When I decided to be present where I was and be grateful for where I was, something as simple as a palm tree taught me a lesson. When you are present where you are, as Corey said earlier, when you show gratitude, as Justin and Maurice were saying earlier, when you release your comfort and be content, if you just be your valley is not as bad as you think it is. Your valley actually becomes, as Reginald said, your stepping stone to get to where you need to go. There's several peaks and there are several valleys. Be grateful for each and every one of them. Because the moment you... The moment you do not show gratitude is the moment that you fall into your comfort zone. It's the moment you lose everything. And Can I add something? Yes, please do. Please do. In plateaus, I was always taught that if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. So there is no plateau. In other words, if you're not accelerating, you're getting worse because the day that you were, if you're at the same place you were yesterday, that means you're moving backward, not forward. But gratitude comes within that because each day that you move forward, you're able to, you have the opportunity and the space to go because not everybody wakes up, no, not everybody's healthy, not everybody's in the right state of mind to can do everything they set their mind to do. Another thing is, you know, having a higher purpose. I always go back to my calling of a higher power, which is Allah. And that allows me personally the freedom to do as I want and say as I want with full focus on what actually is the, the issue and no deflection or no scarecrows or no biting of the tongue or, or you know, walking with eggshells as to get what I want or say what I want. So I speak from righteousness and, and fearlessness because not that you need anybody or don't need anybody but you know that there's thousands and millions upon if not billions of people who feel just like you who stand up for something that's, that's greater so the plateau that people might be in from my experience if you focus on the bigger picture wherever the, the, there's light at the end of the tunnel you realize that you're actually moving forward so you're really not in a plateau and sometimes if you move if you look inward 
on the lighter scale or if you look inward, sometimes the reason of the plateau is because of stuff that you neglected in your comfort zone. So just to give an example, I'm here looking at uh, sales on e-commerce. I'm saying, this is not selling, this is not selling, this is not doing nothing. Let me see why. And I'm looking, I'm trying to press, there's no place for me to put my, my size of my shirt. So people who are going on, they can't put the size of their shirt. They can't put the orders. It means that there's a lot of time for abandoned cart. That could be a reason for a plateau. So while I'm thinking I'm plateauing, I'm not doing enough here, I'm not doing enough there. Listen, you didn't do what you needed to do to get to that level. So therefore the level knocked you back down another level because you didn't really spend, like when you build your, your foundation of uh, cement, stone and granite and gold, you don't have to worry about somebody taking it away or taking away because your, your, your foundation is the Sphinx. It's not going nowhere. They can't figure it out. You don't need you're not living hand in mouth. I'm not living hand in mouth. I don't need, uh, nobody can take me off of anywhere, I'm, wherever I'm at, I'm going to stay there until I decide to go to the next level. Or unless, or while I'm still on this planet. And that right there, have I, have you got the gold grips and man, or have you got there, other people have done worse to get there. So don't ever put a judgment on how you, have you got to where you're going, wherever you live. Um, so sometimes the plateau that people are in it could be a mental plateau, it could be a depression plateau, it could be a, a you're in the wrong surroundings plateau. Maybe you're not encouraging people so people are not encouraging you. Maybe you're not giving gratitude so people are not giving gratitude to you. Maybe you're not giving praise so people are not giving praise to you. Maybe you're not giving support so people are not giving support to you. If you're not giving health tips, people may not give you health tips. So therefore you're in an uh, unhealthy processed food type of mindset and that leads you stagnant. And in times like this, when you have anxiety, um, uncertainty, depression, and bad health, that you're just wide open to disease. Wide open to disease. And the reason why this is excelling in minority communities and Af African American <laughs> communities is because of the health. So when your respiratory system goes, if you already have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, um, or excess weight, that you haven't released yet. Whatever, what, when you get rid of it, it's going to attack those things. And you're not going to have a standing chance to get it, to, 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 to beat it. So you're eating to die before you even get to disease. So by the time you start eating to live, you know, your chance is a little bit, a little less than the person that's been eating to live the whole time. So when you hit that plateau, sometimes it's just that you just needed that rest. Like, Red, like, like uh, Reverend Reginald was saying, sometimes you needed that rest to just regroup your thoughts. And sometimes within that regroup of thoughts, you get to see things for what they really are. When life is moving fast, sometimes you can't see. You can't see. I mean, I've always, in life, I've done some things and they've always said, if you, if you go to jail, that means you're not playing the game right because the game ain't played to go. <laughs> the game is not played to get caught. <laughs> the game ain't played to get caught. But I, I, I have a lot of close friends and family members who, who've had to sit for a long period of time, eight, nine, ten, some in there for life. And in those periods of times, you you get to look back and say, you get to see different things and see different and see people and see situations for which you which was been there the whole time, but in your mm. plateau, you really had had time to rest. So like, like Pastor Reginald was saying. You have to rest sometimes because a, a tired a tired mind, you're going to make mistakes in mm -hmm. business and in life that you never would have made if you just gave yourself some time to refresh and just, you know, revamp for a second. Let me reset. Like when you're fighting or something or you, whatever you, you're doing, you got sometimes you got to reset because you didn't shot your shot and they, you didn't miss or they didn't hit you. And now you got to reset and just see where things are and reevaluate from there. So you have to always reset on a daily basis because things change. Nothing stays the same. So I just wanted to add that because um, I learned a lot from what you were saying and what Temple was saying. And I wanted to add my piece of value to the plateau. So what, just to recap, the plateau for me is not a plateau. It means you're actually moving behind. But to rest within the plateau is definitely necessary. And sometimes you just need a good good surrounding. Like this, these teams, these, these, these calls with, with like-minded people who are entrepreneurs and, and business owners and doing different things. This is what's needed to basically, you know, fuel your harvest 
Because if you ain't, if people ain't encouraging you and telling you where you where you messing up at, you just gonna stay there and not even gonna realize mm -hmm. it. And sometimes the people will see it; they'll see the potential. Your enemy or people who are scared to do things, and it never should be a comparison or a jealousy thing. It should be, what are you doing? Because what everybody, what's on everybody else's plate is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. If I, I'm vegan and you eat ham, God bless you. That's for you, but that's not for me. I'm not worried about what's on your, your plate because what you eat doesn't doesn't consume me. So sometimes, you know, when if you can work together in a collective matter, that force is unstoppable. But when you sit back and you nitpick and you become the crab in the barrel, that's when you never get nowhere. And this scarecrow scent, when they see people of greatness, this scarecrow scent, this this deceiver scent, there's people that are sent to disrupt your movement of forwardness and cloud your vision of what really matters. And when you realize what really matters and what's clouding your vision, you see how simple and how petty they have drawn your mindset. And one of Antonio's things, before I actually got on the call, I watched a couple of his things, and there was one saying that he said, don't let a small man come into your church, into a big church and bring you down to his size. And that, that goes on mindset. So in other words, when you have a goal and you have a vision, doesn't mean you're better or you're worse than anybody. Everybody has different walks of life. I love people unconditionally because I've been in a lot of different situations. So it don't mean that you're better or worse. And if, you, if nobody's ever been in a bad situation, God bless and I hope you never have been. But you love people unconditionally for what they're, but everybody's not on the same mission of you. And sometimes everybody doesn't want it as bad as you. They ain't going to put in the work. They ain't going to do these calls. They're not going to do the seminars. They're not going to do everything that it, it takes for you to actually get to the place you're going to get to. But they'll be there at the end with you. But so sometimes you got to say in your plateau, this person's cool for this amount of time, right? But when it's time to work, okay, I'm going to have to leave you alone for a little bit. When it's time to move here, when it's time to learn business, I know you're not going to put in these hours or these calls or these, these seminars and you ain't going to put out the money. You're not going to invest in yourself. You invest in material things that worldly goods that mean nothing but you're not going to invest in yourself. So therefore, I'm going to leave you here for a little bit and I'm going to move forward. That doesn't mean we bad or we on bad terms. That means that you are the consumer. You're not the producer. Everybody can't be the producer. If everybody was a producer, there'd be no consumers. So within that, everybody plays a part. There's different parts on the puzzle for a reason. And when you put the puzzle together, it all makes one good big picture. So when nobody's competing and fighting and comparing and they're all working together to move toward and everybody's comfortable within their own whatever their specialty is that's when you start to move forward and that that's where your plateau really is not a plateau it's just a rest because you're letting everybody do what they're good at that's all i said about that. awesome thank you so much justin for your your valued input thank you very much um, one of the, some of the things you were quoting were coming from how to eat to live by the honorable Elijah Muhammad and Antonio actually, uh, follows the book and he only eats once a day because of that book. Uh, he has, he started following it last year and he, because of it, he's, he's read the series twice now. And because of that, he's lost a lot of the weight, the weight, the weight loss that you've seen has be, been because of that book. So Justin, thank you so much. Thank you for your input. Extremely thank you. We are grateful for it. So I'm going to now pass it over to Reverend Reginald. All right. That was, uh, that was well put together. That was well said. It's a good conversation, good talk we have going. Uh, anybody have any, anything else they want to get off their chest, add to, intercede with they self? Anybody? The floor is open, ladies and gentlemen. Do we have anyone? You know, I want to um, pick off of what Justin said. I'm just going to say it in some other words. 
Um, he says, if you're not moving forward, I can't quote what you said, sorry, but I'll say it this way. It's stuck like this. <laughs> the moment you stop learning, you start dying. It's really sharp and harsh, but that's how I heard it for it to stick. The moment you stop learning and stop growing, you start dying like grass. Or in the, the good books, it's called withered. Things wither away. So don't wither away and just grow and be prosperous. Also, Reginald, your your story with the uh, the big HC, I was dying laughing over here. Not at you, but with you, because I that whole yeah. journey, bro. I know that journey. I I went to go sit down for. <clears throat> I thought it was gonna be two weeks. Two weeks turned into twenty one days, and then it turned into a six month program called uh, YMAC. And at YMAC, it's funny because. That's where I actually was sat down and learned uh, a lot about the the Bible and listening to God. And as I was running, God's like, where are you going to run to now? Like, it's funny. I feel like he had like me in this cage that was, I was in this small box, but the cage, the county, the, the process was still bigger than my small box. He's like, you can go run around in here if you want to figure something out. And uh, I just literally sat down. The only thing I had with me when I went there was my faith and how to play chess. And that's all I did for the longest. And after a while, playing chess got, it was no fun playing against the same person. I got to the point where I would only play one person who I could never beat. And it left me thinking, how can I do something else that I can win at? And it came down to just literally, literally listening to God, getting his word. And when I got it, I, that's when he showed me um, being there. I I like how you said you were grateful for, for what you were, where you were at and how you started to appreciate the small things. For me, I started to appreciate yeah. mayonnaise packs. A pack of mayo makes a big difference on a, on a chicken sandwich. And <laughs> I'm there. And it's funny, I'm saying it like that because, like, that's all I eat out here. It's like Chick-fil-A is like like heaven food compared to being in there. But um, it, it really showed me the small things that we don't take for, uh, or the small things that we take for granted. And we have to appreciate life for what it is and everything that we have down to the point of breathing. Like right now, my, my allergies kicked in at this season and it's like not the season to have allergies. But just breathing through my nose right now is teaching me to be thankful because earlier I was breathing fine. Now it's like, I don't know if y'all can hear me through this mic, but it's rough. I sound nasally. Um, most important part I want to leave on is when God sit us down, when we're sat down, take the time it takes, which leads back to what I was saying earlier. Just don't rush. Don't drag your feet. Just take the time it takes. Leads back to what Deanna always says, being present where your feet is. And that that's basically my, my two cents that I can get out right now. My thoughts are usually all sporadic, but I try to pull them out as I can. So thank you guys for listening. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, last week, uh, Mr. Smith told me that I made a word up over cap. He told me that word wasn't real. Uh, it was real. And it's going to continue to be real. But I got a new word this week. Uh, in, in cap. In cap. This, this, is, this is what we're going to in cap it with. I hope that's a word. Okay. <clears throat> what I appreciated the most was when I, when I and I'm talking about the book is where he say, change your behavior. Because I like to go on live and, and some of my series was change your atmosphere. You know, I like to say atmosphere because you know, your atmosphere is everything around you. So, and, and I like to, I like to, to change the behavior because while I was speaking, I was just looking at the times where I had to change my behavior. Because I didn't have, I didn't, my examples was what was in front of me. Because I had nobody in my ear. Because I, I, I didn't, I couldn't say that I, I just didn't respect people who 
couldn't tell me nothing if that made any sense. I'll break it down later. But I, 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 you had to have substance to get my attention. You have to be authentic. It has to be, okay, yes, I, I can get this from you. And that old man in that book, I guarantee that I probably had one or two old men in my life that was just like that in the book. And I, I know one of them was my dad. And the one thing he used to tell me is, when you going to stop surviving and live? Mm. And part of that, I didn't understand what he was saying. I mean, I got it at that time because, you know, I was doing everything under the sun that everybody else had already done. So at that time, yeah, I got what he got. But when I got older, I got down to the bone of it, to that, to that good part of it. And it was changing my behavior. I mean, I, I mean, come on. I had to look at it, man. Okay. I'm used to doing it this way. And I've been doing it this way so long. And it got me to where I needed to go. Hey, hey it got me where I needed to go. I mean, it got me to college. I mean, hey, it got me to college. I had to pay for one class, one school that I went to, and I went to several schools in several different areas. I didn't have to pay for anything. And it got me there. But when it was all done, when it was over with, when there wasn't no more peaks to climb, and then that's when it dawned on me. That's when the valet was seen more comfortable. And when I was in the valley, and, I, and, and when my dad, you know, he left me, one thing that I could remember is you got to change your behavior. You got to change your behavior, you know. And, you know, every now and then, I, 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 tried to, I, I went back to them old, them old ways, them old habits. And something happened every time. It, it, man, it got to a point to where I went to, where I was at a church and the prophets came and the prophets told me, just like this, I'm going to tell you, just like they told me, your hustle is broke. And I looked at that lady, and I looked at their nine and said, you are absolutely correct. And it just starts spiraling, you know. I mean, you just it had to change the behavior. I'm, what, what I'm saying today, even if you're at your peak, even if you right there, I'm talking about it, it feels good. It feels like that breeze that you get. It's hot outside, and that breeze comes through that hallway, and you just sit down in that chair with that lemonade, and that breeze hits you. You know, that, that that part right there, that, that's that change your behavior moment and appreciate that breeze. Appreciate you changing your behavior because I'm telling you to get you to that peak faster. I enjoyed myself tonight, you guys. I really did. I want to see y'all lovely faces again next week. And uh, with that, if we don't have anything else, nobody has anything else, uh, we'll see y'all next week. Yes, sir. I'm not coming behind that. We we end capped it right there. That's end cap. End game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for joining us for another Integrity Leadership class. We're looking forward to seeing you next Thursday from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. If you do not have your, your book list, please email, text, call, DM, message one of us. Let us know so we can get the book list to you so you'll know what we will be reading next. And again, we're looking forward to seeing you next Thursday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. for a leadership integrity class, integrity leadership class. Thank you all so very much for coming out. Out of the words of our CEO, you can plant better and you can dominate. Thank you so much. Everyone have an amazing night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.